The sun may be spotless, but a huge coronal hole has rotated into the Earth's strike zone. Is there a solar storm lurking? Those stories are more in the news this week. Space weather this week has been extremely quiet, but the sun sure has looked interesting. We've been following a couple snake-like filaments on the sun with a coronal hole that kind of is shaped just like it, just right above it. Now this huge coronal hole is now rotated into the Earth's strike zone. It's basically just now rotated there, and we're beginning to see a few puffs of some fast wind from that coronal hole, but nothing yet sustained. The bulk of that fast wind will probably hit Earth here in the next day or so, and and because of the size of this coronal hole, we could be seeing some fast wind for the next few days, which means we might reach storm conditions even into the early part of next week. But NOAA isn't expecting it to be a huge storm, but it might just bring us some aurora to mid-latitudes. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we are still well below the seafloor when it comes to solar flares. And you know, that's kind of what we continue to expect as we move on to solar minimum. Back on the 18th, we did get a little surprise. We got nearly a C-class flare from region 2696 as it kind of bubbled up to the surface. It's now since decayed a bit, so things have kind of gone back downhill, but it has given us enough solar flux to keep up the radio propagation into the marginal levels. But this won't last, so we have maybe a couple more days before that dying active region rotates out of view and we're back into poor conditions. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past couple weeks we've actually been pretty quiet. Now we have had some activity from some small pockets of fast wind from these shrinking coronal holes that rotate into the Earth's strike zone for a short while. Back on the 8th and the 9th we reached active conditions, but it didn't last. And then again on the 14th we actually bumped up to storm conditions for a little while, and that was sporadic through the 15th. All of these gave us some decent aurora in many places that weren't clouded out, but it wasn't enough to be sustained for us to have that worldwide aurora. Since then, things have kind of calmed down and calmed down, but we're kind of the quiet before the storm because we are expecting that fast wind that could hit us at any moment, and that hopefully will bump us up to active conditions, maybe even storm levels, and it could last easily through the beginning of this upcoming week. And although the pockets of wind have not been all that sustained, they still have given us some pretty good aurora in many places of the world that wasn't completely covered by clouds. But it doesn't matter. We can even create our own beautiful displays, like this Epsilon-3 rocket that was launched by the Japanese Space Agency when they were putting a satellite into space. It even created some gorgeous noctilucent clouds. Now, getting back to natural aurora, we saw beautiful shows in Norway and in Sweden, in Scotland, and in Iceland. When we move over the pond, we saw some good views in Ontario, Canada, and in tons of places in Alberta, Canada. We've got a lot of eyes in the skies in Alberta. We saw it in British Columbia. And in places that it wasn't totally overcast, we could even see it in the uh, upper tier of the United States, like in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in Minnesota, and North Dakota. And even down south, we saw the Aurora Australis in New Zealand and Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what do you see when you look at the sun from the backside? Nothing. Which makes GPS operators go, yay, and makes everybody else go, Ugh. You amateur radio operators, you're the hardest ones that are going to be hit. We have basically no active regions on the back side of the sun, so this means that amateur radio propagation is probably going to tank for the next two weeks. 
and that's going to start here in the next two or three days. So this is what you get to look forward to. Now, your GPS operators, of course, are loving life because very little uh, solar flux means great GPS signals. So you guys should be loving it, even down in places like Brazil where you guys oftentimes have problems. Now, your aurora photographers, you notice we're kind of looking at a solar minimum sun here. The, the coronal holes are now beginning to retreat to the poles, so what you're getting is really no chance for a solar storm either. So you guys might get a respite starting in about midweek next week, and it'll be a good two-week break. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast wind that should be sustained here over the next couple days. We've already seen a few puffs of that fast solar wind, but it's not anything that's lasted for very long. At high latitudes, NOAA's expecting active conditions with about a 35% chance of a major storm. At mid-latitudes, we've been downgraded a little bit. NOAA's now only expecting unsettled conditions with about a 25% chance of active conditions and even a 10% chance of a minor storm. So the minor storm possibilities are still there. It's just probably fleeting because the windows continue to shrink. So your aurora photographers, especially at mid-latitudes, you're going to need to be on your toes because the aurora that might reach you may not last all that long. But nonetheless, we should still get some decent activity over the next couple days before things begin to die down. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week. Again, everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares. As a matter of fact, right now the sun is completely spotless. We have the remnants of region 2693 that are still adding to the solar flux. But as you can see, the solar flux right now is barely hanging on to the marginal levels for amateur radio propagation. As a matter of fact, as that region begins to rotate off of the Earth-facing disk, we will end up seeing that that number drop back into the poor conditions. And that should happen sometime around midweek, and it will continue to stay low and probably stay in the poor conditions, possibly for the next couple weeks. So the space weather this week is really keeping us on our toes. The sun's been teasing us with a couple puffs of fast wind, but nothing sustained. And I know you aurora photographers are just chomping at the bit to get out there and get your shots. So stay ready, because it's coming. Now, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, the news this week's not so great for you because we're about to enter a lull of poor radio propagation that could last maybe as long as two weeks. So let's hope that the sun kind of wakes up from its nap to be able to bring us some more active, active regions and up that solar flux for you. Otherwise, it's going to be a little tough over the next couple weeks. But the positive thing is for you GPS operators, low solar flux means good GPS conditions, especially at low latitudes in those problem areas and especially at night. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.